Welcome back. Today we're going to tie the weighted version of my DFT sculpin. I uh, went back and forth on this one a little bit, tied a couple of them, looked at the ones I liked the most and how I wanted to weight this, and uh, I settled on the dumbbell eyes as opposed to the cone head. Uh, it just allows me to keep a more broad profile. It gives, it, it keeps that sculpin um, appearance that you're after. With a cone head, it kind of cuts it down slightly. I mean, you still get the pectoral fins with the deer collar head and everything, but I like the way that this looks better. And uh, this is the one that I stuck with. So we're going to go ahead and get started on that. Uh, we're going to do this one in tan today. I need to find a little bit of glue over here. There we go. We're going to do this one in tan. It's a tan brown mix. Um, but to start on this, I'm just going to get a thread base down for my eyes. There's dogs next door, I swear. You'd think that was a full-time job to bark. Anyhow. So I'm going to take, these are a set of MFC uh, glitter eyes in their large blue. And I'm just going to get these secured into place and spin these around, get them on the bottom side, get a couple more good wraps over the top just to secure this in even more. And then what I want to do is grab a little bit of zap, throw this right on the top, let that sink down in between that dumbbell portion and then get a little bit on the bottom and then just secure it up with a few more wraps just to make sure that my eyes are going to be pretty sturdy for me. There we go. Now that's all secure into place. I want to take and just run this thread back slightly. I want to run my thread back, get another portion, just kind of open looping that, open looping that to the front and end at the barb of the hook. So now what I want to do is take my two tail feathers here that I got this off of a uh, whiting chickaboo patch, chickaboo soft tackle. Line those up nice and even, just like that. And then get the length. I want it stopping between the point of the lever and this first mark right there. So I got like, I don't know, a half inch window there to where I can shift those around. But for consistency purposes, I usually err on the longer side. However you want your tail to, to line out on this one, that's entirely up to you. But I'm going to set that down. Get that. Eh, those aren't lined up as good as they should be. Those aren't lined up as good as they should be. There we go. Set that down and then just go one wrap right on top, making sure that these fibers are going straight back. Or making sure that my tail's going straight back, I should say. I don't want it kicked off to the side a ton. Eh, kind of like that is. I must have rolled a portion on that or something. I must have rolled a portion. See, that looks good right there. For some reason, I got a little kick to it. So, we'll just take that. That looks better. That looks better.
There we go. Our tail's looking pretty clean right there. We've got that running straight back after a minor adjustment. And now I'm going to take just a minimal amount of flash. I'm going to take just some copper and run this to the back. Um, we're going to wind up with like four strands. I may pick one out of here and just do three, uh, depending on depending on how it looks to me. I think we'll stick with the four. We'll run that down the side. Right like so, and then down the opposite side. And then we'll take and just trim that up even, right like that. There we go. Now, because I forgot my cream marabou in the back, I'm gonna have to go into the junk pile here. And we'll just pick some off the side of the one of the ones that I was gonna have set aside for a dubbing brush. Left the cream marabou in the back room, so. I realized that about halfway through tying that tail in, I'm like, I don't have cream marabou for this, so not the end of the world. We're just going to pick this off from the side and run these down like we typically would with the with the full plume. All right. I want this covering about, uh, it's a little bit less than a quarter of the way back the tail is where I want my coverage on that. And I'm just gonna take, secure that into place on my side and then get one more on the camera side. So we can take that out, get that out of our way. Go back with another section right here. slightly and then same thing on this side we're just gonna get that secured into place and take this about to our halfway point on the body section halfway point on the body section so there we go we've got our nice cream section underneath and then we're going to stack that with some tan chickaboo on the top. One and two. Take this tan chickaboo and then run it the same length that your cream is. Go one, two right on the top. Just clean that up with some thread wraps. Run that to the back. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And this just kind of fills it out. You can put one off to the top if you want, but typically what I found tends to happen is when you put just the, the one marabou plume or the one chickaboo plume on the top, it winds up kicking to one side or the other. And then when it's in the water, um, it looks off balanced. Um, not that it makes a huge difference on how it swims, but it does look a little off balance. So I started doing this and then once it gets in the water, um, this thing slicks down. It looks really thick in the back right now. It's really not when it's in the water. It, it gives a really nice um, slender profile going back toward that tail section. So there we have that all tied in how we want it and then same as before we're going back to our dubbing loops we're going to make one right like so and let me find it here hold that back with a clip 
And then the same thing, we're going to make one more loop, and this is going to be for our ice dub. Take it to the halfway point, and we'll go into our ice dub portion of the body. Get that in the cradle. Middle belly ice dub is always, if anybody has watched any of the past couple of videos, anything where there is a light underbody with ice dub, it gets this minnow belly. I love the way this stuff looks. Nice and loose wraps. And then just one wrap right in front of the next. You don't have to be real compact. I don't want, I definitely don't want a ton in there. You can see it's pretty sparse. I don't want a lot of material in there. And then a couple of these long ones, I can just go ahead and pick through or trim them up a little bit. And then I'll bring out my second loop here. I'll get that thrown in, half hitch once again, and then I'm gonna pick the rabbit off the hide with the material clamps. There we go. On to the flesh-colored rabbit. Once again, we're going pretty light on this as well. I don't want a ton of material in here, just enough to fill out this body portion. So we'll take that right in the clamp, get that in. Set that off to the side, and we're gonna throw this in our loop. Oh, the wind out there is ridiculous today. Ridiculous. Okay, that goes in the loop. I wanna spread that material out just slightly. Just give myself a little bit of extra coverage. And then it also makes it a little bit more sparse so it doesn't catch on itself as much. So then we'll give that a quick spin on Two, give me one more on there. Really pull all of that material together. And this, this is just open looped to where I leave off with, or to where I leave off at my halfway point. That's just open looped. And then right like so, we'll take and trim this off. And then I'm gonna clear a little path going back for my chickaboo to lay pretty pretty well flat. Okay, that looks pretty good. Back to the chickaboo here, and I'm gonna take two pieces. I'm gonna take two pieces here. These actually both match up pretty well. They're both good. Doesn't really matter which one's on top. Peel those fibers back, get to where you have just the stem for your tie-in. And then I'm taking this halfway back, the original stacks. There we go. Halfway back, the original stacks. We're going to go one, two, just to get those secure. Move those stems to where they're sitting right on top. Of your hook shank. And then we can run those right to the front. There you can see we've got our nice stack going on the back side there, or going into that back portion. And then right over the top we've got a nice, we've got nice coverage and with the cream on the underneath side. Oh, now my pups are getting all worked up. There we go. If the neighbor's dogs aren't making noise, it's mine.
think she's done. Yeah. She said her piece, I guess. <laughs> nope. Still more. Still more. All right. Anyhow, while she's going through her nonsense back there, I'm just trimming out the rest of that flesh rabbit. I'm going to set that off to the side. And then I formed the two dubbing loops. I'm going to go back to the minnow belly. And like I said on this really sparse, I don't want this real heavy and I'm going to work this right behind the eyes. So we'll just take a quick spin right there. Give me a little bit more. Make sure that I don't have that piece trapped. And right to the front portion of the body. Right behind the eyes, just kind of peel that stuff back, clean it up with a thread wrap, get everything pointed in the right direction. And then we'll trim that off. And then back to the flesh rabbit. There we go, just line that up, get that nice and even. Spread those fibers out just slightly. That's going to be a little bit on the long side actually. too often. Well, all the time that I saved prepping that previously is lost so we'll go back and start over. Go back and start over. Alright, grabbing just a little bit of this extra flesh. Set that off to the side, we won't need that anymore, hopefully. Get that back in our loop. Get everything set and how we want it, and then we'll give that a quick spin. It stayed together this time. I may need to tighten that loop up a little bit on the tool itself. So now we're just making these wraps, like I said, open looped before. Same thing, I want those open looped and going right in front of the eyes on this pattern. One, two, just to clean everything up a bit. Get that out of your way. And then we can peel this back and just make a couple of wraps. Once again, just to lay our material back for us. Stand this up, I'm going to trim that portion of the fly to where my chickaboo is going to be able to lay flat again. Before I go into the chickaboo, I'm going to take just a little bit of red so I can have a throat on this. I like putting red accents on on these flies for some reason. I, I, I put, it started on the Tenet 2 with me and then it went to the October and then I think I may have maybe a landing strip or I think the landing strip has the red and then uh, this one as well. I just really like the way it, and I really think it is a trigger point. It only takes a couple extra sec extra seconds to do it. If you want, you can sub uh, the red laser dub in here if you want. I don't know, for some reason I landed on the, on the rabbit, so that's what I wind up doing on this pattern. But like I said, if you want, you can sub the, 
the red laser dub. Only takes a little bit of extra time to get this in. Look at that dang thing fell off again. I got lucky it landed in my lap this time and not halfway across the living room. Maybe time for a new tool. So there we go. Just two wraps right in the very front. One, two, get that secured into place. And then on the top portion, I'm just gonna wind up pushing that down to the bottom as best I can. It's a little tough with the eyes in place there. Go one, two, give that a good pull on the way down. And you can see that throat that we have underneath that little collar section. I really like the way that that shows up. I don't know, you're not, you're not gonna see red on a sculpin um, on the underneath side at all. But like I said, for some reason, I'm just drawn to that. And I, I do think that it's a trigger point and it does seem to, to do really well. So back to our chickaboo, we're gonna throw in just one piece on this. I'm gonna find a pretty thick plume here. And I want that to go back and then we're gonna go into the deer hair work to finish this fly out. So we're gonna set that chickaboo in. Just go a couple of securing wraps right there. It's laying back nice and flat. We got it how we want it. And now, if you want to, you can take and throw like a straw or something over there to keep all of your material out of your way. Um, I don't know if I have one big enough to go around all that or not. I'll see if I do. Let's see. Yeah, that'll keep everything out of our way there pretty good. So now we're gonna go on to prepping our deer hair. So I'm gonna take three pieces of natural and mix it with brown. And then we're gonna have the flesh underneath like we had before on the unweighted version. It's a little bit easier um, with, this, with these eyes being in there to get your um, to keep your cream and your, or your bleached and your um, mixed deer hair apart. Because like I said, you have that natural barrier with the eyes, but a little bit of practice and you can, you can have a nice clean break on the underneath side without the eyes on there. I actually kind of prefer the unweighted version a little bit. It just, um, it dances a lot more in the water. The weighted version, um, it's, it still has great motion. It still has a great profile, but uh, that unweighted version, man, when they're chasing flies down, that thing skirts through the water, just, it, it goes every which direction and it really elicits some good eats. But this one, I mean, it's not like it's so heavy to where you can't move it. Um, it's still, it still darts and dives all over the place. Maybe a little bit more so on the up and down portion because it, because it is weighted, like I said, it gives you a little bit more of a, of a jig action if you want. So while I'm getting all of this prepped, just getting this set to the side here. These are gonna be the three top portions and I need just a touch more of this brown. And that should round out our deer hair. So now, we're gonna take and just shuffle these like we did before. Just shuffle these around, get a good mix between the brown and the natural. It's gonna have that same color break that we have on the chickaboo and the, uh, um, 
part tails. So, that looks like a pretty good mix there. I'm going to go ahead and get this in the stacker. Even these tips out as much as you can. For some reason though, when I mix these two together, I don't know if I cause a lot of static when I'm mixing them or what it is, but they don't really want to stack all that well. So it usually takes a second round on there to get a better stack. There we go. So now, I'm just going to measure this out stopping it short of the point of my hook on a 4x long if it's a 3x between the point and the barb bring these together and i'm just cutting that section off flush and i want this right behind the eyes because i'm still going to get one more stack on the top right behind those eyes so you can see how i have everything setting right there before I really pull, pull down with this thread, I want to spread that stuff out just like so. So now we can go ahead and whip finish, and I should have done this beforehand. Switch over to our 200. Now on the underneath side here is where we're going to put our bleached deer hair. I'm going to grab a chunk of this. And we'll set that underneath. Trim off the tips. set that right underneath. I want to catch that right behind the eyes on on this fly. One, two, you can see how that's really flaring out and then I'm going to get a third right there. And then just pull straight down. It'll bring all of that hair together. Make sure that we have a nice even section of deer hair underneath. I don't have it kicked to one side or the other. And then I'm going to mix up my second stack here for the top portion. Then we'll spin one in the front, trim it, and this fly will be done. Just mixing this stuff up giving myself a nice modeled effect to the head. Just sort of even this out. That way I know that I'm catching this center bundle, I'm gonna get the best flare possible. Then I'm gonna trim the tips off and then even up the back as well. in this center section here. Set that right in front or right behind the eyes. And then I want to catch that and go one, starting to pull down a little tighter. Two, my threads just all but disappeared. And then my third, I'm taking my hand off. I'm holding the eyes and I'm Flaring that out as best as I can to get that nice clean break between the top and bottom sections of deer hair. So now I'll bring this around. I'm going to work this right around that eye to make a good clean wrap. Same thing on the other side. I'm going to wrap that right around the eye. 
not catching too much deer hair and then bring that around. What that does is it just pulls that hair back in behind the eye slightly. It makes it a little bit easier when you're trimming this to get a good clean eye out of that. So the last portion here, this is the last one. This is gonna be a full spin in front of the eye. Just mixing this up like always. Throw that in the stacker, grab the center bundle. We'll make a spin and we're on the trip. You can see our mix that we have right there, pretty consistent throughout. Now we just want to set that in. I got a little bit heavy on the deer hair. I didn't drop as much as I figured I would when I was mixing everything together. So now, right in the center between the eye of the hook and the actual eyes, I get two wraps and then I get my third and I just take and spin that around. It gives me a nice flare right through there. I have good even coverage throughout the entirety of it. Find my eye, just push this back slightly. And then one of course, of course. <laughs> I got trapped in the eye back there, so. It's making things a little difficult for me. One, two, three. There we go, and then one, two. Okay. We've got a nice clean eye on this section right here. Last thing that we're gonna do is trim this, and it's really not a whole lot different from how I trim the unweighted version. I start on the bottom, I just make a nice pass underneath these eyes, and you can see that nice clean break between the uh, tan and brown and the cream on that first pass. I just bring this down, I start to angle this back a little bit just to clean all of this stuff up, being careful not to touch up your rabbit or any of your body materials. So that was just a quick pass on the bottom. Same thing on the top as before. Not real aggressive on your bend. That's the bend that I typically would use. I'm gonna to go to about this, and I want that really nice broad profile on this head. I want a really wide, sculpin looking, flat wide head for this portion. There we go, working that to the back. Now I just want to cut this down even more. Making sure I don't interfere with the collar or anything like that. And you can see that profile that we have right there on that side view. That's a really nice flat portion that we have. Now I want to go back to this and I want to go just above my eyes. I'm really flattening this out even more on that bottom section. Now that I'm starting to get the shape coming into view, I'm really starting to develop that under or that um, sculpting profile. 
So now we'll just get a little bit more aggressive on this top section, making sure that you don't go too far in your early cuts and then you wind up messing the entire fly up. Making sure that we don't interfere with our collar section. I'm just going to dust this up a little bit. And I think I'm pretty happy with this. I'm just going to get my overall shape with the scissors. I'm going to take this right like so and start getting my shape. Go on the underneath side as well, making sure that I have a nice and symmetrical head right here. There we go. There's some of this underneath stuff that I need to clean up before I finish this fly. I'll get that once the camera's off. But then the last thing that I want to do is I want to just trim around this eye so I'm able to see it. There's that. And then also go in and find this other eye. I could probably trim that down just slightly. Just so my eyes are exposed. And there we go. We'll peel off this straw here. We'll be able to see that underneath red portion. And because we wind up coming back a little bit with that um, with that razor blade. What that winds up doing is that cuts your rabbit to where you just have these little slivers going down each side. I really like the way that that looks on the red. I don't know why I like it so much. You're not really going to see that in any of the naturals at all. But I just really like the way that that looks and that's one of my favorite uh, attributes on this fly um, really seems to do well for me let me see here there's a couple more things that I want to trim on this my collar got a little bit sideways I don't know it looks good I'm just nitpicking yeah there's a couple of things that I can need to clean up on it before I call it a finished product but that is the completed weighted DFT sculpin um, like I said, this thing will give you a little bit more of an up and down uh, with the weight on the eyes as opposed to the unweighted. It darts and cuts a lot more uh, depending on what the fish are doing. I'll go back and forth between the weighted and the unweighted. Uh, but the unweighted, in my opinion, is a little bit more fun to fish when the fish are responding to it. That's going to wrap this one up, guys. Any questions or comments, as always, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. Thanks as always for watching and we'll catch you next Wednesday.